Hello and welcome to all the Hillians of the West. I'm Joe. Hope you don't mind once again the semi-specialized intro. Now, today I'll be discussing, as part of Dragon Month, another dragon. This time, one from the Legend of Zelda universe. Dragon in question is one that has, in the game at least, very little interaction with Link in any particular way beyond just being dragon. You're a knight. Conquer it. And you have to do so to save all the Gorons and get Darunia to become the Sage of Fire. Volvagia is apparently an ancient dragon sealed in the volcano by one of Darunia's ancestors, or so it is said. That being said, this is a wildly different backstory from the Himakawa Akira manga of Ocarina of Time. Arguably, in some ways, I prefer the manga's interpretation of the dragon character of Volvagia, as Volvagia is a lot more tragic a figure in there. The thing about Volvagia in the manga is that at the beginning, Link purchases the baby from the Hyrule Town Market, intending to set it free. Volvagia, though, chooses to follow after Link, viewing him as his friend, and eventually learning to say his name. Reluctantly, the two part ways, though Volvagia obviously would have preferred to follow after Link and remain by his side, viewing him as a kind of older sibling. Link, in turn, came to adore the little dragon. Volvagia helping to flesh out Link's softer side, as well as his boyish side, as the way Link kind of treats Volvagia is almost as akin to a dog he has to set free. Quite honestly, I had flashbacks of the Free Willy movie, with Jesse having to free Willy. I think this was partially the idea. The only thing is that in the manga, things take a more tragic turn. When Link returns to Hyrule as an adult, Volvagia has become possessed by Ganon, and is made to haunt the fire temple. Link goes into the fire temple determined to stop the dragon in there and to save the day. Link soon realizes who the dragon is in the middle of the fight and is immediately at odds with himself over whether or not he should actually put it out of its misery. But as there's no way to free Volvagia, he has to do it. With the most gut-wrenching part in the manga being when Volvagia whispers Link's name in thanks for him having freedom. But on the other hand, he seems genuinely pleased to have seen Link again, as this seems to have been all that Volvagia wanted was to see his best friend again, if only for one last time. And Link, of course, is heartbroken and ends up crying like a baby over this. Why this is important is that it puts into context the evil of Ganon and adds a personal touch to it. The thing about Ocarina of Time, at least a manga, is that there is very little that is personal between Ganon and Link. As the movie Godfather so well put it, it's business, not personal. But in the manga, with this one act, it has suddenly become personal. And the trouble with Link in the manga is that he's not as well fleshed out as, say, Link in other comics or mangas, such as A Link to the Past, or even in the Skyward Sword game. The thing is, Link, by all accounts, in most of the games, is a pretty well fleshed out character in his own right. And I'm going to include Ocarina of Time. I actually like the characterization and the hints we get of Link in the game. And we get even more indications of his personality in Majora's Mask and in Twilight Princess. And the trouble is that the manga honestly makes him pretty bland. But the manga suddenly flips it on his head and gives Link an air of tragedy. You come to love the character with the Volvagia story because you suddenly realize that there are costs and sacrifices to be made on this hero's journey. Link's journey in the manga is only made epic by the sacrifice of Volvagia, as it has been said in The Librarian. A good hero gives his all into the fight, but a great one sacrifices what he truly wants for others. And that is the idea behind Link's sacrifice of Volvagia. He sacrifices what he wants to save others, and what he wants to save Volvagia, as Volvagia has basically become a prisoner in his own body. Every hour is torturous. Every minute just leads to Volvagia becoming even more insane. He is broken by Ganon's evil, so that what Link does is a mercy. But on the other hand, it also allows us to see that there is a truly wicked side to Ganon. And we see, yes, Ganon is evil, but he's also a sadist. He's a monster who will enslave an innocent dragon and turn it into a monster in order to simply so chaos and terror amongst those he considers his enemies. In this regard, it allows us to come to despise Ganon all the more and appreciate Link all the more in turn. So Volvagia is probably the most important character, I would argue, to an extent, in regards to Link's 
growth as a character because it is through his sacrifice that Link is able to finally reach the point where he'll need to be at in order to defeat Ganon. That is to say, this is his crossing from child to man psychologically. And this is also allowing us to see just how unlikable as a person Ganondorf is. With Volvagia's tragedy also being a little reminiscent of Children of Hurin, of course, but in Children of Hurin, the dragon curses Turin and Neonor as he lies dying. Whereas in Ocarina of Time, the dragon is the damsel of sorts, or at least the friend. And so Link was made to do something he didn't want to do. In a way, Volvagia is more like Hurin himself. Overall, I'm not gonna lie, this is my favorite part of the Ocarina of Time manga. While I love the lore about Volvagia in the actual Ocarina of Time game, and I find that the lore is superior in the game, the plot point and tragedy of Volvagia in the manga in some ways is better. Slay in order to save, or do you prefer the monster from the game? Either one is fine. I lean towards both. I like them both for what they are. And don't forget to, if you enjoyed this video, smash that like and that subscribe button as though you were Link taking down Volvagia with his Megaton Hammer.